Alrighty everyone, hello hello, and today I want to talk a little bit about, about something maybe that would concern most people trying to get into witchcraft, kitchen witchcraft specifically, and that is food waste. So obviously, right, like when we talk about kitchen witchcraft, the nice thing about it is the fact that a lot of the stuff that we do is done through cooking, right? So we don't really need to worry too much about wasting any of our spell ingredients because we're actively consuming them and that's really good. Of course you'd want to do that. However, I know that a lot of kitchen witches um, also dabble in different styles of magic from time to time. Not all of the magic we do is at the stove. So sometimes there are ritual elements like say a money bowl or say just a, a ritual spell that requires certain items like maybe certain herbs or anything else. And also, right, when I've done my things like interviews with the gods, uh, I do have like offerings out and people have asked me often like, what do, what do you do with these offerings once you're done with them? Do you just throw them out? To which I say, listen, there is a lot of things you can do and there's a lot of things that will be helpful if you want to reduce food waste as much as possible when you're doing magic outside the kitchen. And so to start off, let's look at how we deal with that exact situation when you have an offering that you are giving to a deity that you don't know what to do with after. So this is a good time to introduce the concept of libation. Now, in many different cultures uh, across time and space, one very notable one being like ancient Greek religion, there would be a concept of libating things. And so what that means is you basically just take whatever item you have, usually a drink like wine or something, or water, and you pour it out onto the ground. Obviously, uh, in modern times, this can seem a little bit wasteful, and that's understandable, uh, to which I just say, get a small vessel for it, right? I'm willing to part with a small little saucer cup <laughs> worth of something, um, you know, to make it not feel so bad. There is something to be said about the idea that it's supposed to be a sacrifice, and that it is supposed to be giving something up. But if, you know, just throwing things out like that bothers you, you could just try to reduce the amount that you're giving at any certain time. Another thing about libations, though, and this is something that's really important to me, is the idea that you can also see it as giving a gift to the spirits outside, right? And in fact, in other cultures, like Slavic paganism, this was a way that people knew that the gods had accepted their offerings and their petitions. They would leave uh, certain foods and things out by the totemic, um, you know, statues and sculptures of their gods after making a petition. And when they went back in the morning, if it was gone because wild dogs or some animal had come taken it, that was seen as a sign that the gods had accepted their petitions. So for me, I really like that because that kind of works two ways. First of all, I don't consider it wasted food if an animal was able to make use of it, right? So if like the birds are able to make use of any of the seeds or millet or anything I use in a spell, if they're able to eat that, fantastic. If they're able to make use of any buckwheat I put out there, or if any squirrels are able to come by and eat any like apples that happen to go out there, wonderful. That's not a waste to me. That's, you know, these, these animals get to have something a little extra, especially in these colder months during winter. And some spirits even like scraps, like my house spirit, the tree outside. If I have scraps, like the, you know, the ends of uh, onions or something, or if I have like an apple that got way too mushy and is no longer edible, then I will toss it out to the pine tree as a way of like, first of all, compost, but second of all, as, a, as an offering to the tree spirit. However, there is also something to be said about other cultures where you are able to eat the offerings. And one of the most notable ones is actually in the Jewish religion. So way back when, like way back, right? Like I'm talking like Exodus, kind of Leviticus days, there was actually a commandment um, that the priests, right, would actually have to eat the bread that had been on the altar after a week. And this was honestly a big, big thing because back then it was believed that the gods did actually physically eat and they would physically eat and drink. And that's why idols was such a problem because idols were like little stone statues where the people would actually try to pull their gods down from heaven and stuff them into this stone or wooden idol. And they would do spells to open the nose so it could breathe and open the mouth so it could eat. And they would offer sacrifices of food that they did believe that these gods were actually consuming. So when God says, yup, uh, tithe your spices, tithe your, uh, and you know, put this bread on this altar to me, but I don't eat that, 
and I also don't sit in a stone, my presence simply sits here in the ark, that's a flex on God's part to the other cultures. That's God saying, I don't need to get stuck in a rock like that, and I don't need to eat this mortal food. This is just here for show, and then my priests will eat it. So, there are cultures where that kind of idea happens, where it's okay to eat these offerings because that's expected. And there are also some traditions, like with demonolatry, where some people say that, yeah, the, the demons that you work with, they want you to eat the offerings because they want to experience not only the energy of the item, but the energy of the joy of you experiencing it too, right? They can experience it there and also through your experience of it. So sometimes, depending on the spirit, ask them first, it is more than okay to just eat the offering. And now as we get into spell items, I will say that honestly, I don't often use like food foods for ritual spell work for this reason. So like, if I can just get away with putting like a pinch of basil or a pinch of garlic powder, or even like the skins of a garlic and onion that I'm, I obviously can't eat anyway, that's really good. That's a way to still get the power of onion and garlic without having to actually go out of your way to spend money on it um, or waste a perfectly good onion, right? Obviously, again, you can think of it as not wasting because it's going towards your spell, but if you can't afford to just be spending money on apples and oranges and all these other things that you're not going to consume in some way, doing that's a great way to help, right? So onion skins, garlic skins, or you can also grow your own herbs. Like if you grow your own chives like I do, or your own rosemary or anything like that, that's really helpful because fresh herbs can get really expensive and a lot of people aren't going to the store to buy rosemary just to dry it out and bundle it. So if you have the space to plant your own herbs, that is a lot of really good stuff right there. But also, if you just take little pinches of the dried stuff, that's all right, because you don't need a lot of the dried stuff for your recipes anyway. It also helps to have replenishable spell types too, right? So like for instance, a money bowl. Money bowls are great because you really don't need to change them out every single month. You can just kind of keep adding to them a little bit at a time for whatever your purposes are. And that's totally fine. So that reduces a lot of waste because you're not throwing a huge bowl of stuff out every single time. But also it just it just helps, you know? It just it helps to be able to do something little each month rather than have to do a whole kit and caboodle every time and spend a bunch of materials. I would recommend completely refreshing them like every quarter or like every three months, but it's up to you. And of course, because we are kitchen witches, consider the functional use of items like oil or salt, right? So for instance, uh, even in the Catholic tradition, there's holy salt and there's holy oil on top of holy water. So if you wanted to make a protection blend of something like oil, olive is already protective and you can infuse it with things like garlic, like uh, rosemary, like other stuff to make a flavored oil that you can then use on salads or, you know, when you're baking things and roasting things. We already talked a bit about infused honeys, for instance, too, or tinctures, but the same thing applies. You can infuse some honey with stuff and with certain intents, and whenever you want to do a certain spell that has those intents, you can pop a spoonful of that honey into a cup of tea. And now it's fantastic. And speaking of teas on top of it, if you don't want to just put chamomile in the spell bowl or something, it was made to be drank as a tea or used in baked goods, so by all means, make your potion- Oh my goodness, speech. By all means, make your potion with your intent and then just drink it, right? So drink those properties of that chamomile, that lavender, and what have you. The bottom line is there's really no reason that you should have to feel like you need to waste large quantities of food items to get good spell work, right? When you combine them with more, like, staying items like crystals and stuff like that, which obviously you're not eating or just throwing away, it makes it really easy to just use a little pinch here and a little pinch there, or it makes it easy to build even rituals with the intent of keeping them or eating them for a later time. Like, you can do a whole ritual around some oil and then keep that oil for later. I have a, a very protective oil that sometimes I will use to anoint myself, to anoint candles, and you could still also use it on food. So hopefully these are some ideas to kind of help, you know, stave off that worry of wasting food and still get a lot of great magic in. So with all that said, I will see you guys next time for some more tips, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. See ya!